All right, so I finished rebuilding the T56 transmission out of the GTO, um, and I got an aftermarket uh, eBay or actually an Amazon special shifter for it. Um, I don't know, it didn't seem to be too great so far. I had to run a die down the threads to be able to get my Hurst shift knob on there. I got my nice white uh, shift knob with the six speed pattern in it, um, and that's just the stub shaft from the GTO. I won't be using that, but it's just to, to weight it down a little bit helps it shift a little easier when you're hand turning it, and also you can see it spinning then at least. So I'll attempt to shift it through the gears. I can't get into reverse because I bolted the reverse lock solenoid on. Um, before that, I had no problems getting into reverse. Um, yeah, it's going to be really hard to see anything, especially while trying to shift and turn the input shaft at the same time. But well, anyway, let's, uh, let's first and second. <clears throat> I think that's third. It should be fourth. You can see the different speeds as you know, I'm basically turning at the same speed each time and it's now spinning faster. And then this should be fifth. Oh yeah. Oh, it's hard to turn those high gears. And sixth. Sorry, that's a two-handed one. Oh, lovely sixth. And then, of course, neutral. Now, it's funny because it, there's no resistance on it, right? So it's spinning the end. But if I jam a hammer or something in there, it probably, probably won't. <laughs> okay. There you go. I jammed my foot there. There you go, see? No, it's no. Well, ah, that's it. All together. Ready to go in. Brand new bearings, synchros, sharpened up the dogs on a couple of the, of the ones that were getting a little worn on the on the gears. I replaced both these bolts here. I always do that every time with these T56. I've had them snap before. You know, it's cheap insurance. Just order them with your rebuild kit. All new snap rings, gaskets, seals. Well, there's no gaskets, but I mean, you know, new uh, reverse spring or, or retainer. Sorry, so the keys don't come out. All new wave washers and spacers and stuff. Um, all nicely shimmed. I've got it to uh, about a thou and a half in play in the main shaft and the counter shaft, and about four and a half thou on the uh, counter shaft extension. Um, this is my tool for checking the counter shaft extension in place. Just uh, I think it's M6 or something, or M12, sorry, ready rod, and you just remove the hole. Right there, you take that plug out and you just slide that rod all the way in and thread it into the shaft and you can move it in and out to check the end play. Um, and I just clamped this piece of quarter inch flat bar plate to the front of the bell housing with a couple of vice grips and then I mounted my dial indicator off of there and checked it. It's not super accurate because, uh, well I mean it is, you just got to be careful. So I would kind of do that idea. Um, but the thing is you get a deflection measured off of the the ready rod so you kind of have to push it in and then stop wiggling it, take a reading, pull it out and take another reading and then of course the difference between the two is your end play. So I'm right, I'm happy with that. Spec is two to five thou, four and a half, a little bit much but it, it is just the, the extension shaft, not a big deal. And uh, spec is zero to two thou for the main shaft and uh, counter shaft. I'm sitting at a thou and a half. It's pretty good. I'm happy with that. So, yeah. Get her 
buttoned up and in the truck and it would be kind of nice. Um, what else? There was something else I was going to mention. Oh, I had a heart attack. Um, where did that circlip go to? It's around here. I had an extra circlip. I was freaking out because, of course, I bought this transmission and, uh, oh, there it is. This circlip here, this is an extra one. Now, that's totally normal because the, the circlips they give you um, are also for the F body transmissions. And the main shaft at the front on the GTO is turned down a little bit. It's got a slightly smaller um, diameter on it, and that's got a smaller circlip for it. Uh, this larger one is for the F body, not for the GTO. So thank goodness I didn't forget a circlip in there. That would have really peeved me off. Um, that would have sucked. Had to tear it all down and redo it. So that's good. Um, Yes, you got to make sure that you pl install the uh, third gear and synchro before you press the main shaft bearing on, because otherwise you can't get them over top of it. I mean, that, that is kind of weird, but that's the way it is, and I end up pressing it on and destroying the bearing, removing it, and had to run out, and thankfully Lordco had exactly the same brand, high cap Koyo, same part number, so I didn't have to change the inner race and the main shaft again, or the um, input shaft again. So I just pressed the new bearing on, and uh, that was that. It was in an SKF box, but it was actually Koyo, so it matches the inner and outer race. And it is normal um, to have a little bit of up and down and side to side play on your input shaft. That's what your pilot bearing is for, it helps align it. Okay, because I've, I've had people ask me that before. Like, you don't want a ton, but, I mean, you can easily move this probably at the tip, you know, a quarter or so. Either way, it's perfectly normal. You just don't want in and out play, which I had only a thou and a half of, so you can hardly even feel that, actually. But, yeah, no, that's, that's that. So, all right, that's it.